So recently I bought Skyrim VR. No, no, calm your irresistible. And just like every time I play Skyrim, I wondered how does the AI work? What is that? Oh shit, what is that? And after a bit of looking around their modding tools, I found their sandbox behavior, which is a very generic way of having the AI handle their daily routines. Looking at the documentation and parameters, I thought, you know what, I reckon I could replicate this. And so here we are. Alright, so how did I replicate this behaviour in Unity? Well, the creation kit documentation has some quite detailed information. Nothing about the code or behaviour explicitly, but enough that I'm able to take an educated guess at exactly what it's doing behind the scenes. So the information that I was able to make these educated guesses from were the parameters that you can pass into the sandbox procedure. I won't go over all of them because that would be boring. So let's take a look at the first one, location, described as specifies an area that the actor can sandbox within. What we can gather from this is that an AI or an actor can only sandbox within a certain area defined by the user. From my limited knowledge of the creation kit, I assume this could be the location around an actor, so it could be the actor that's performing the action or another, the location of a given entity, or just a cell, which is a area defined in the creation kit for world streaming. For my purposes though, I'm only going to use the first two. Luckily, I already had a means of finding instances of actors and entities in the world. But a problem that you might have is that if you have multiple instances of an entity in the world, you will only really be able to use one of them. So you might need to implement some sort of unique entity that can only have one instance of it in the world at any given point. The next parameter that caught my eye was the allow idle markers flag, which proves to me that actors can in fact walk around and interact with furniture, anvils, or any objects that they find in the world. After playing Skyrim for a very long time, I knew that this was the case, but I didn't want to build a system off of anecdotal evidence, so it's nice to see that it is in fact true. Next, we have the energy parameter, which determines how long an actor can interact with any given thing. In my opinion, Bethesda kind of over-engineered this one because there's a whole formula for it. It seems a bit unnecessary. So in my case, all I did was did a minimum duration and maximum duration parameter and it worked well. There's also a whole system to do with how the actors will pick which object to interact with. They'll score these objects based upon something. Um, I couldn't find any details as to what that something was. So in my case, I've just gone the lazy route and had it pick a random object from the list of objects it finds although it will try its best to ignore the last object it used so you're not just sort of sat there doing the same thing forever. In my last video, I spoke about how my AI packages system actually works, but I won't go over that again because I've spoken about it in two videos now. So if you want to go watch that, you can. I'll wait here. And in the meantime, I think it's probably worth me speaking about the GDWC, which is the Game Development World Competition. Thundermead has officially qualified for it. So if I win, then I'll win some really cool prizes. Um, it will allow me to make the game better, learn new things. Um, so if you like the look of my game, then there's a link to it in the description. If you go onto the page and just like it, it'll hopefully get it to the top of the page, more people will see it and maybe I'll win. Fingers crossed. Back to the video. All right, so I'll just show you a couple of examples of how this works. So here you can see we have the do nothing sandbox package, which is essentially just what AIs will do when they have nothing to do. So you can see we have two elements in the allowed interaction list. The first is sit and the second is sit own bed. Sit own bed is a special interaction that has the AI running this package look for their own bed, but not other beds. So if I just quickly show you this chair entity, you can see that it has two interactables. The first is the sit interactable, which corresponds to the sit allowed interactions and the customer interactable, which leads me perfectly onto the go to tavern sandbox package. And this will only allow the actor to interact with the customer interactable. So you can see the chair obviously has a customer interactable, but there are lots of other things that can have a customer interactable, such as the tavern bar. So we have the barman interactable and we have the customer interactables. So any customers will come and stand here and then take a drink, which you can see down here is listed in the actor interactable with dynamic item and it's a cup of ale and it tells them that it should be in the right hand and that when they get there they should animate the drink action. And so this performance benefit I speak of is that the query to check if an interactable exists only actually runs if the actor needs it and that will more than likely just be once every 20 seconds, if that. Alright so let's see it in action now shall we? 
We'll use Eadred here as an example. So he's looking for something to do and we know right behind him is his bed. So that counts for this sit on own bed. But just over here in the tavern, you can see we have this chair which has the sit interactable. So he'll look for either one of those two and given the area that he's within, he will only find these two. So if I just quickly step through the code, you'll be able to see that firstly, he finds the chair to be able to sit on. And because like I say, sit on own bed is a special override interaction. It checks if we have that in our list and then adds an empty one. This empty one is used to determine whether or not it should sit on the bed. So you can see that from the get random element, Adrid has chosen to sit on his bed. And if we watch him, we can see that that is the case. He has gone and sat on his bed. One other small thing I've added is that the AI will now actually look at you when they approach you. Just adds a bit of immersion to the game, I think. And that is the basics of my new AI sandbox behavior. Since I want to add modding to the game, in the future I will likely abstract this out further and maybe even create a user interface for it similar to the creation kits, but that's a long way in the future yet. And if you're interested in Sundermead and playing it on release, then you can go and wishlist it on Steam, there's a link in the description, and I also have some social media accounts where you can keep up to date with exactly what I'm doing on the game. I am most active on Twitter and Discord though, so those links are also in the description. Finally, I have a Patreon, so if you want to support me by giving me a little bit of money, that would be really, really appreciated. No pressure though, and there are some benefits such as the third tier and higher will give you early access to the game to help me test it, which is pretty cool. And like I said earlier, Sundermead is in the GDWC, so if you want to go and give that a like on that page, that would be really appreciated as well. Anyway, I hope this video tickled you at least a little bit, and uh, I hope you have a good rest of your day. Being old's not so bad. Daughter keeps me fed, and my working days are done. What? <laughs> Trying to use you I'm as too old to work. What are you doing that for?